Hi everyone, it's Marianne, and for today's video, I'm staking out my house plants. Thank you so much for joining me today, and one of my goals for this growing season is to get some of my house plants to mature. And one of the best ways to do that is to give them something to climb on. And I have been like researching different methods of what I think is best for my house plants. And there's a couple of ways that I have found that I think would work really well for my house plants. And I'm going to share with that with you today. But honestly, with house plants, if you give them something to climb on they would climb. So I think it's really just a matter of preference. But like I said, I'm going to share with you what I think would work for me and my house plants. But before that, I want to share with you plants that I have already staked up and tell you why I picked that particular stake or pole with the plant that I matched them with. And you can see some of them already behind me in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. But before we start, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Marianne. Welcome to My Ways is Life, where I take you along my houseplant journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. I also share lifestyle content that's focused on sustainability, wellness, productivity, and also share some of my personal and travel vlogs here and there. So if that type of content interests you, please make sure to subscribe to my channel before the end of this video and also give this video a like and comment down below. I would love to hear from you. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So there are three things that have to be met in order for me to choose a particular item or method to use to stake up my houseplants. Number one is aesthetic. My plants have to look good with whatever I'm using to stake them up because my plants are part of my home decor. Second, it has to work for my houseplants. It would really get them to mature. It will be easy for me to propagate them later on or to add more to it as the plants grow. And third, and this is very important, that after I stake up my plant, I can still move them and place them anywhere and they're not bound to one spot because of the stake that they have. And one method that has gained a lot of popularity is to use wood planks to stake up our house plants. And I can see the appeal in it, it does make the plant grow and mature a lot faster and it sticks to the wooden plank very easily. But what I don't like about that method is one, it's not very aesthetically pleasing. It makes your space looks like it's always under construction. And second, it's very hard to move the plants around once you use that method. And if you've seen anyone use that method, they use really tall, really large wooden planks that have to be leaning against the wall. And it's very hard to just move them around once the plants are attached to it. So for me, the compromise that I came up with is this. As you can see, I have three plants here on smaller wooden planks. And this one is actually crafts wood that I got from the dollar store. Well, now they're $1.25, so I don't know if this craft wood is worth $1.25. You could probably get them somewhere else cheaper or for free. But what I have here is a couple of pothos plants that I have propagating in water. And what I did since this craft wood was going to rot easily if I stuck it in the water is I duct taped it on the glass container as I have these cuttings propagating in water and attach the cuttings to the wooden plank with the garden tape. So when I do have to change up the water, it's easy for me to dump it out and replace it with water since it is duct taped into the glass. And to hide the ugliness of it, I just put it in a decorative pot and same goes for the golden pothos. For the Syngonium chia pans, it's a bit different since this one is potted up in soil and it has a much thicker and stronger vine. So what I did is if you can see right here in between the cash bow and the nursery pot, I stuck the crafts wood or wooden plank in between it and I used Velcro tape to attach the stem of the Syngonium chia pans. When I have to water it, I do detach it from the wooden plank and I just take it out like that and then water it and then put it back like how it was. So with this, the wooden plank pretty much acts as a support for the Syngonium chia pens. It hasn't grown into it, at least not yet. And it is growing the wooden plank really soon. And it's going to be the same case for the pothos plants too because pothos plants grow really fast. So what I plan for this is actually to grow them outside. I do have large wooden planks outside that they can grow on and it's okay when it's outside because our backyard is a pretty much woodsy area so it would blend right in. But inside the wooden plank method doesn't really look good and they take up too much space. So right now, this is the compromise that I have for that type of method. And in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet, I have another plant that is growing on a bamboo plank. 
and this one is my Syndapsis Silver Hero. And as you can see, I have the two plants growing on both sides of the wooden plank. And this one is growing in sphagnum moss. And because this one is made of bamboo, it will still rot, but it doesn't rot as quickly. And as you can see here, it is stuck into the soil. And this one is a slow growing plant. So it just started to push out new growth. And I don't know if you can see right there, it has started to attach itself to the wooden planks. So since this plant is a slow growing plant, I can keep it in the IKEA greenhouse cabinet for quite a long time. And honestly it has been there for like a few months now. It's just started to shoot up new growth. And aside from being a slow grower, the syndapsis is a shingling plant. So I don't expect this to grow the bamboo plank anytime soon, at least no any sooner than the one that I have on the crafts wood. But by the time that I have to replace the wooden plank or add more to it, I would have probably figured it out by then on how to do that without disturbing the shingling, hopefully. And, and this one is my Monstera Stadlian Aurea. I do have it on a moss pole, but it has rotten off. So it's kind of like flopping all over. And this is one of the plants that I'm going to be staking up today. And these are the other two plants that I am going to be staking up. The Skeleton Key Pothos. And this is the one that I really want to mature but it needs a pole or a stake to do so. And my philodendron brentianum, which unlike my other heterosaceum plants, it doesn't really look good trailing. It does need something to climb on. So I'm also giving it a stake or a pole to climb on today. And this one is a silver lady. I give it a tiny moss pole that I DIY'd, but this one has like, I think three or four plants in it. And unlike the Syndapsis Silver Hero, I want it to grow like 360. So that's why I gave it a rounder moss pole instead of like a flat wooden plank. So yeah, so those are the plants that I'm going to be sticking up for this video at least. And the other ones you could probably catch on my Instagram reel and YouTube shorts later on. So also make sure to watch my YouTube shorts. I come up with YouTube shorts daily and also my Instagram reels. If you're not following me on Instagram, do follow me on Instagram. I'll have my profile linked down below. So the first one that I'm gonna stake up is the Monstera Stadliana. As you can see, it's already flopping around because the moss bowl is broken and it's also outgrowing it. So I need to change it and give it a new one. And I'm going to give it a moss bowl that is something like this that I did with my Monstera Stadliana elbow. And you can see how I did this one in my YouTube short or Instagram reel, but basically it's the same method that I'm going to employ for the Monstera Stadliana Aurea. And I'm using the same poles that I got from Amazon. It was in my plant care haul video. If you haven't seen that yet, and it's also linked in my Amazon store, if you want to check this one out. So I'm just carefully removed the moss poles. Some of the roots have attached to the moss pole. So I'm just trying to be very careful and detaching it from that so that I don't ruin the root system. And there you go. And I have a tray here that I recently got, well, I got yesterday from Lowe's. It's about $5, which is a pretty, for me, well, for me at least, it's a pricey plant saucer, but I do need it for my ficus audrey and my fiddle fig. So I got three of them from Lowe's. And I just poured the Leca on there. And I wish to keep it in this container, of course, washing it first. But I want to make sure that the moss bowl would fit into that glass container. If not, I have this Chinese takeout container that I made holes on it that I could also use. But yeah, so as you can see, it has a very extensive root system. This is one of my few plants that really does well in Leica. So I intend to keep it in Leica. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash the roots and wash the container and I'll be right back. All right, let's try the one and just put it, see if it would stand. Uh, it's a bit short. So the glass is a bit short, so let's try it. I mean, it's gonna work with this one, definitely. So I think let's just use the Chinese container cup for now. And then I'll just figure it out later if I want to change it out. Because with this one, I'm going to need a cash bow. And a cash bow is going to take a lot more space. 
if I want to keep this in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. Try to find a way to also make this into a self-watering one. So what I'm going to do first is attach the plant onto the moss pole before I actually plant it. It seems like it's in reverse, but I feel like it's easier this way. And I honestly have tried it the other way where I plant it first and then attach the moss pole. It's just so much harder. So I'm doing this now and then and putting it back in semi-hydro in the container. But, okay. And I'm going to use Velcro tape to attach it to the pole. And I just want to make sure that the roots are entering the hole so that it, they can grow into the leca. In theory, that is the plan. Okay. So now it's a lot easier for me to actually put it in the container and repot it in leca. Here's the container that I'm using. And now I'm going to put Leica in the moss bowl, which in theory should be the easy part. It is obstructed by some of the root growth, but I just need to give it a gentle nudge because I do want the roots to be growing into the Leica. And put some more Leica all the way to the top of the moss bowl. I can extend this now by adding this on top. I just need the attachment to do it, but I don't think I'm going to do it now. I'm just going to let it outgrow it a little bit before I add the attachment. And this is my Monstera Stadliana, staked up on a Leica pole, and I am going to water it next. Way I pour on top so that the Leica in the moss bowl also gets wet, and it would direct all that water down in the container. But since it doesn't have a cash flow yet, all that water is just going to go into the tray and I don't want to waste it, but that's kind of like the idea. And then just wet the rest in the container. And there you go. There you go. There you have it. The next one that I'm staking up is my skeleton key pothos. As you can see, it's a very much juvenile plant. I did propagate this from a single leaf cutting and now it has produced a lot of leaves and a lot of cuttings. I think now it's about three or four cuttings in here, but in order to get it to mature, I need to give it something to climb on. So for this one, the pole that I'm using is the coco coir pole. So this one is probably the most common and the one that's most familiar to all of us. And I've never tried this before, although I have DIY'd some in the past. I never really bought one until now, but I was able to buy a four pack for just $10. So why not try it? Because if I'm going to DIY one, it's just gonna cost me as much, if not more. And I also kinda wanna test out how the pre-made ones work and if it's better than the DIY ones or DIY, or DIY ones are better. So here I have one soaking in water and I really want the nodes of this and the aerial roots of this to really stick to the coco coir. So by keeping it moist, hopefully that would happen. And I haven't really figured out a way to make this into a self-watering one. I kind of have some ideas. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it for this video without making this video way too long. 
so watch out for a youtube short reel or a future video on it i'm going to pot it up in this terracotta pot which is a six inch pot which is a little bit large maybe for this one but with the moss pole combined and i'm also going to put some lica on the base it shouldn't be too large for the skeleton key pothos so i'm just gonna go and pot it right now this one is currently is in soil so let's check the root system as well and i do have some potting mix right next to me that I can put on top of the Leica to still be the main medium that this skeleton key pothos is growing in. As you can see, it's starting to become a little bit root bound in that pot, so it is time to repot it anyways. The soil is wet because I did just recently water this. I forgot that I'm filming this today. Actually, I knew I was filming this today, but it just didn't occur to me. Maybe I should wait to water it and, you know, film first and put it in the first before I actually water it but I didn't think to do that so similar to the glyca pole what I'm doing is I'm going to attach the plants to the pole first before I actually pop them because for me it's just a lot easier to do so and make sure that they are positioned the way that I want them to so with this one and Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure that the cuttings, I'm using all four, they are evenly spaced apart. There we go. So honestly, this is not even going to cover a huge part of the cocoa core, unlike the Leica pole. But that's kind of the point for this one, is to get it to mature on the pole. There we go. And... I'm just going to cut a piece of twine to tie them all up together. Mm. Not going to lie, by having the coco coir wet, it's making it a little bit harder to do this. But we're powering through. Not that harder, it's just like, well, it's wet. So it's dripping. But it's not even. We'll make it even. There we go. Just tie it up. All right, there we go. And I'm just gonna space them a little bit more evenly. Okay, so I might need another one on top, but I think this works for now. I can pot it up. And this is the stake that is gonna go. You can see the hole over there. That is where that's gonna go. Just making sure the roots are around it before I pot it up. Oh, it's so messy. I'm sorry, but that's how I work. I can't be like those other <laughs> plant YouTubers or Instagrammers that when they repot, everything looks nice and neat. Unfortunately, I'm not like that. <laughs> but okay, so what I'm going to do is put Leica at the bottom, as I mentioned. Not too much, and then I am going to put potting mix. I'm not gonna reuse that one. I am going to mix a new one, but I need a mixing pad because this thing is wet. Um, okay, let me use the tray that I was using earlier. First, perlite. Not a lot of perlite left, but we will make do. Potting mix, this is what I'm using. This is what's available to me, so. That is what I'm using. Okay. okay. Since I am putting it in a much larger pot, I want it to have a really well draining soil and hence also why I put Leca at the bottom. Just making sure that it gets properly drained out and also using a terracotta pot to help it wick out any excess moisture pretty quickly when I water it. So, okay, so that's the soil mix. And I'm gonna put it, try not to block the um, drainage holes with the pole, which is also why I put Leica. So that's kind of like gonna help it with, with it too. And just dump soil all around.
So I'm trying to get it to stabilize a little bit. It's not stabilizing, uh, but we are trying. So at this point, I am just gonna cover the top with like a, because that would help it stabilize a little bit more instead of just putting more soil. Because I don't think the soil is gonna help. And that way too, when I do water it, if I am top watering it, it prevents the soil from overflowing because it's not all the way, the soil is not all the way to the top. And it's just like a... And okay, so... So these are the ways that I am sticking up my house plants using a craft wood or wooden plank, a smaller version of it, a like a pole and a coco coir pole. And I'll give you updates on these plants and there's also other methods of sticking plants that I want to do but can't show yet because I don't have plants for it. And honestly, my back is hurting and I don't want to make the video too long. So I'll just show them in a future video or catch them in my YouTube shorts. I post my YouTube shorts daily and also on Instagram reel. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, my handle is at my weeks life. I'll link my profile down in the description. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And if you haven't yet, check out this videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful day. Bye.